Come on. Here we go. Ready? Oh yeah, it's me! <laughs> Welcome to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show! From Rabat, Morocco! Welcome, Welcome to, to the GCN, GCN Show! show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we've got a huge new competition with SIS, plus we announced the winning entrance from our GCN quiz, not to mention Tech of the Week and some great hacks and bodges. Yeah, and we begin to answer with your help, which is the best country in the world for cycling. Welcome to the GCN Quiz! The inaugural GCN Quiz has now officially closed. Thanks to all of you who entered, but this means that we can finally announce one very lucky, intelligent, and obviously very learned winner. Well done, and congratulations to you, Lior Aventan. Yay, well done, Lior. Congratulations. There are also 10 spot prizes, and the winner's names are currently scrolling along the bottom of the screen. So keep your, keep your eye out. I think that's right. But if you didn't win, don't worry, because there's going to be another GCN quiz, the second ever GCN quiz, coming up very soon with even bigger prizes. Massive really? prizes, yeah. It's going to be good. Bigger it's than going that. to be an absolute yep. corker of a quiz. Tech of the week this week are these beauties. Any ideas? So that thing where you... A oh, water diviners. Yeah. No. Nope. Bar ends? Um, nope. Ah, crank arms for a tiny monkey. No. So, right, I'll put you out of your misery. I was at a cross race the other day, local to me, and I saw a guy who had those on his bike. So I went to find out. You ready? These are called race caddies, and they're designed for those of us that ride to races and don't want to use our expensive race wheels to get there. So it's kind of perfect for cyclocross. You don't wear your expensive tubs out on pavement just before you get to the start. So it's not a new idea, they're actually originally kicking around in the 50s, so Matt presumably remembers them. But these are a modern and refined version. Pretty cool. Yeah, and Sai has just had to explain to me, but what you do is you use a spare rear wheel quick release, use that in the front wheel here, and you mount one of these on either side, and then you just put your spare wheels using their quick releases on the top. Genius. It is genius. Now, these are made out of uh, 2000 series aluminium right here in the UK. And if it seems like your kind of thing, then you can check them out, get a bit more information on racecaddies.bigcartel.com. You reckon you can wheelie those down? Probably. We have got an absolutely huge competition prize for you this week. Now, to celebrate their forthcoming sponsorship with Team Sky, SIS are offering GCN viewers the chance to win, now get this, enough SIS nutrition to keep their team or club going for a full season. That's Ooh. right. You have the potential to become Mr. or Mrs. Popular for an entire year because whilst you won't be receiving quite as many gels, etc. as Team Sky, they'll go through 24,000 gels and 8,000 protein bars next year, you will receive 1,000 energy bars, 1,000 energy gels, 50 tubs of Go, 50 tubs of Rego, 100 SIS stroke Sky bottles, plus you'll get a nutritional seminar so you know exactly how to use it all. That's a bonkers prize. Mm. That's absolutely nuts. Now, to enter, all you've got to do is click the link in the description below this video and answer a simple question. And I suggest that you share this out to all your club mates or teammates and get them to enter as well. And that way, you increase your chance of winning significantly. So, just top tips. It's time for caption of the week now. And last week, we gave you this photograph of me in a slightly compromising position. Most of you were very generous in your captions, much like my bum, I suppose. Uh, so thank you very much for that. So the winner is Alex Hung, who said, is that bottom threaded or pressed it? <laughs> oh my word. I don't want to think about that. I think no, it's just standard. I wouldn't even. Standard. Thing. Anyway, well done Alex. Get in touch by the usual means and we shall send your swag out to you. This week's photo once again seems to be of Sai. Don't know who keeps choosing these, mm -hmm. but it's with Ben from Sorted Food, a screen grab from a video we did some time ago. Matt's going to get you started. Is it a turnip? Is it a swede? Yeah. So <laughs> if you can beat that. All you've got to do is leave your comments in the section just down below. 
We are putting together a video of the best places in the world to cycle, and we need your help. We need you to let us know which is the best country in the world for riding, because we're then gonna to put together a top 10 video voted for by you, the GCM viewer. Yeah, so all you've got to do is click on the link which you'll find in the description just below this video, and that will take you across to our poll. But we are going to get you started. Matt. Okay, I'm going to stay close to home. I'm going for the UK. I mean, I absolutely love the variation you have in riding in the UK. Did you know that you're never more than 70 miles away from the sea? That's right, isn't it? That's that is fact. right, yeah. That's a fact. And I absolutely like riding my bike near the sea, especially on the coastal parts in the southwest of Britain. And I think for me, the most wonderful thing about the UK and riding in the UK is the really narrow, twisty lanes and you're always constantly exploring. Finished? Did you have the egg time on that again? Yeah, I, I did. I did. Well, I'm going for Belgium because it has a lot of the same qualities that you've already mentioned, an abundance of small roads which are perfect for riding, but it has the added benefit of that huge cycling culture. So everyone respects you on the bike. You've got these famous climbs, all in a very small vicinity, like the Quaramont, the Coppenberg, the Paterberg, which don't take too long to get up either, which it's makes bonus. it even better. And the ultimate cafe stops. I mean, the selection of Belgian beers is just second to none. <laughs> no wonder you like it. I've had at least eight mineral wards, mineral wards, mineral wards myself. Yeah. That was longer than mine. Yeah, right, for me, it's got to be France. My favourite place in the world for riding is France. Huge variation, it's the prettiest roads I've ever been on. And, as well, there's an extra bonus, I think the off-road riding in France. The trails that are in there are, without doubt, the best in the world. Mm. Well, that's our opinions, which don't count for very much. Well, one each. Very well know, but we'd love to hear yours, so make sure you click on that link and give us to them. We want to make that give top 10 them. video. Give them to us. That's it. That's it. The third round of the Cyclocross World Cup took place this weekend in the iconic sand dunes of Coxider. Now, it was a classic Cyclocross day with rain, near freezing temperatures, mud and sand. Yeah, and it was a brilliant day for Sven Nace and his many supporters around the course because he managed to overcome the young son sens sensation Wout van Aert to take his 50th career World Cup win, a feat which was looking increasingly unlikely with each passing race. Now, I suggest that you head over to the UCI YouTube channel and watch that race in its entirety because despite the fact that you now know the result, it really is gripping anyway, all the way through. It was just a brilliant race. Now, the race also was actually a very welcome but ominously impressive return from Matthew van der Poel, the world champion. Now, this was his first race back following knee surgery, and he finished third, which is absolutely staggering. He is a talent, that lad. But uh, the women's race was won by Sanna Kant. Who no. clearly can. Yep. But she did profit from a puncture by Nikki Harris, who'd been leading and eventually finished 12 seconds back. And the podium was rounded up by American rider Katie Compton. I think Sunny Can is still funny. She can. <coughs> Time now for Dom's tweet of the week. Now, this is an absolute perler. Not from somebody you'd expect ordinarily to tweet about cycling, but this is from Johnny Knoxville, who tweets. Sometimes when you're really hungover, don't you wish you had this guy to get you out of bed? <laughs> Mark Cavendish hit the headlines again this week when he announced a partnership with British UCI Continental team Madison Genesis. He'll be offering guidance to the younger riders in the squad as well as the team themselves becoming a feeder team for Dimension Data. Mm. And in related news, Roger Hammond, who has been at the helm of Madison Genesis since the very start of that team, will also spend some time next year in 2016 working as a sports director for Team Dimension Data. Now, a few of you might remember that back in 2007 when Mark Cavendish started his pro career at T-Mobile, Roger took him under his wing and really helped him along. Yeah, you know, it's easy to forget actually that teammate of both Cav and Roger Hammond at T-Mobile in 2008 was Bradley Wiggins. Mm -hmm. which. Leads me neatly on to the next bit of cycling short news. Segue, yes. Thanks very much. Uh, which is that Bradley Wiggins has just released a new book, and in it, Velo News have pointed out that he has said that he is, might have another go at the hour record, but this time the Merck Star Athletes Hour record, so on an unaero bike uh, with no aero helmet and so forth. Uh, and in that paragraph as well, he also points out that Eddie Merckx wasn't aerodynamic in the slightest. So I'd like to see what Eddie Merckx has to say about that. Anyway, she'll finish this week's cycling shorts with a video which caught my eye earlier on last week. Now, it comes from Colin Thurs, who basically dug a bunker in his rear garden, or a man cave as he personally calls it, and then covered the whole thing up, and in effect had this amazing room which is completely hidden 
from anyone that wouldn't know about it. And I was thinking, how good would that sort of space be for storing all your bikes and maybe doing indoor training workouts, of course, you know, watching GCN videos. Would you get Wi-Fi signal down there? You'd need a you need an extra if router. If you're you? gonna go that if you're gonna go that far and dig a sure. hole and cover up, you'd chill it all can be, in, yeah. you'd get And those, that ladder would be difficult with your bikes, but I absolutely love the premise. Always be a fridge and stuff. Well but, Oh, I see what you did there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I also thought on a rail. maybe some of our viewers have got a space that maybe isn't quite on that scale, but something similar. So we would love to see your man caves stroke woman caves. If that doesn't sound too bad. That sounds pretty bad. There's a hashtag for this too. It is hashtag GCN cave. Could that include <laughs> lofts? <laughs> GCN cave. What What's a wrong cracking with that? hashtag. Sorry. Sure, precise to the point. Just go for it. What he said. You may remember in one of our previous shows we talked about the new Canyons women's team that was set to rise from the ashes of the now defunct Bellocchio SRAM team. Well, in London on Saturday, that team was launched at the Rafa Cafe. Yeah, the team is going to be officially known as Canyon SRAM Racing, and those two companies, along with Rafa themselves, have all committed at least three years each, which is great news all around. That is great news. Now, a number of the riders from Velocity SRAM are just transitioning straight over to the new team, including our good friend Tiffany Cromwell, and then our other good friend, Alexis Ryan, we only got two, yeah. uh, is coming over from United Healthcare along with her teammate Hannah Barnes. Time now for GCN's hack forward slash bodge of the week. People have been pointing out you've been doing forward slash for yourself, I not for our viewers. I always like to get my last slashes right around some sub my Anyway, slashes. three more for you. We're going to start you off with Andy Trevorrow, who's front mech, unfortunately, came away from his bike. Now, rather than wallow in gloom, he actually made his own bracket out of carbon. I have to say, it is rather professional looking. Well, that is a pro. definite hack, not a bodge. Yeah, very, very good. Really good indeed. I tell you what, that must have been painful looking down and seeing that you've just ripped your front mech off. Mm. I can imagine. It'd be like losing a toenail, wouldn't it? Just well, there's no way I'd have been able to create something like that. I would have just had to throw the frame in the bin. Yeah. My, 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 uh, my gear thing came off once. You you know, the, the gear lever snapped off on a ride. Um, so my gear hanger was just swinging around. Pulled to the side of the road, found a piece of tow rope, orange tow rope, three foot long, and wrapped it around my frame and got home. Are you talking about your mech or your shifter? No, my shifter. The down tube shifter? Yeah, down tube shifter sheared off. My word. Oh, that was, uh, yeah. Moving on to your side. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So my hack of the week is from Obadiah Winter. And this is quite niche. I can't imagine there's many people that need to hide their Garmin underneath their saddles. But if you do, because you're a trackie and uh, you need your data, but you don't want the aerodynamic uh, disadvantage of having a Garmin on your handlebars, then check it out. It looks like he's bodged it with a K-Edge mount and then just bolted it right under the saddle there. Quite a neat little job, though. Yeah, very neat. So it probably qualifies as a hack, doesn't it? I can imagine there are times when Matt doesn't want to see his numbers out on the ride. Pretty much all the time. That's, to be honest, a, bit, that's a bit harsh, that, mate. That anyway, hard. Dan, we're moving on to this. Now, is it a hack? That's a bodge. Is it a that's bodge? That's a bodge for oh, sure. It's probably a bodge. a bodge. I think it looks super pro. It looks like a specialised helmet. Anyway, this is from Pete Matthews at GCN Tweet. Road helmet and swim cap equals aero road. Now, it's not only aerodynamic and possibly warm, but also waterproof too. I think this shoving a swimming cap over your helmet counts as a bodge, it's not a hack. Amazing. But it looks, it looks, it looks, it looks astonishingly stylish. It looks but it like does. it's been made like that. Anyway, we have been mightily <laughs> impressed <laughs> with your hacks and bodges over the last few weeks. So make sure you keep sending us to them. I said that before. Keep sending up them to us. Right. Otherwise, we'll 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 all you got to do yeah. is use the hashtag GCN hack, and we'll find it somewhere on social media. And also, if you want to try sticking a swimming cap over your helmet. Please send us the photos as well. I That's think. just another website entirely. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for retro bikes now, and we have had some absolute pearls sent in again this week. I'm going to start with James Derek Armstrong's 1984 Battalion. So this is the Olympic edition bike, nice. and he says that uh, he raced on this in 1987, 1988 after buying it from his local shop. In the beginning, he used his Prem winnings, so those are the uh, laps that where you win prizes in crits and stuff, uh, to actually upgrade the bike into the race winning machine it was. And then he at, later added Campy Record. And that yeah. is an absolute beauty, isn't it? Lovely colour scheme, nice and simple, clean lines and a long blue pump. Yeah, that is really nice. Yeah, However, right. this is the one that I chose. It comes in from Kevin Pett, who sent us a photo of his 1983 Rally Road Ace. Mm, that is pretty nice. So second rally we've had, but I like the look of this one because 
it has that aero water bottle. So despite the fact that everything else, the wheels, the frame, probably isn't particularly aerodynamic, if at all, they've still got that forward thinking from back then, the aero water bottle. I think it's an original. Two absolute crackers chaps, but uh, this one I've chosen comes from Jimbo Solvang. Look at this beautifully mounted Marignoni. Absolute classic. That is lovely. That's from 1998. And looks like that's got Campagnola Chorus on it with Alfredo Binder toe straps uh, and a roll saddle as well. Is Good it, toe strap knowledge, Retro Matt. shoes and bead on by the looks of it as well. It does look nice. I mean, that is, it's a piece of art. Keep I can't believe you can recognise a pair of toe straps from 20 <laughs> paces. Well, there was two versions of Alfredo Binder. There were the regular ones, which are narrow gauge, and then you had the wider ones, which were luxurious, with a, a wider bit of leather so it didn't dig into the side of your foot as much. For some they reason, really... I think Matt pines back to the days of toe clips and straps. I don't know why. Ah, uh, yeah, ironic. Don't it? forget to send us your retro bikes using the hashtag GCN Retro Bikes. How quickly could you clip into toe straps? My worst was... Um, <laughs> my first ever road race at Eastway, the cycle circuit there. It's on the start line and there was about 250 metres stretch to the first left-hand corner and basically I was still on the start line and the bunch had gone around the corner and then I got my foot in and I spent the whole race off the back whilst my dad cried openly. <laughs> <laughs> Comment of the week now, we've once again picked one comment each. So I shall start, and this one came underneath the video that Matt and myself did comparing Mario Cipollini to Mark Cavendish. And it comes in from Noel O'Connor, who said, Matt, complaining about Chippo's perm? Hello. I thought my hair's actually all right at the moment. To be it does look great. Chippo would, have been, Chippo would have been loving that in the late 80s. Anyway, my hair aside, this comment was posted under top 10 tips for cycling in the rain and comes from Michael Motiao. And Michael said, great picture quality. What camera did you use? An iPhone 6S? <laughs> no. Actually, Michael, it was an iPhone 3S. We save our best cameras for filming the dry, don't we? Did they yeah. do a 3S? 3C. Yeah, they did a 3S. Did yeah, they? they? did they do a 3S, yeah. Right, so my, my caption uh, comes from Thomas Long, uh, underneath the retro versus modern wheels. Thomas says, I guess you could say wheels have gone through a real revolution. Ah. That is really bad, Thomas. On the channel this week on Wednesday, how to find your rhythm on a climb with this man here. And lasty. The first thing that you want to decide is how hard the climb is, and indeed how much energy you've got left with which to tackle it. So, how long is it? How long do you think it's going to take you? What's the gradient like? Is it steady or is it particularly variable? On Thursday, five ways to get you riding in the winter. Mm. On Friday, it's back with Tom Lars, who in this time investigates what makes a pro bike pro. It's ridden by a pro. There is that, but there's more to it, as Tom will explain. Mm, sure. And then on Saturday, talking about pro bikes, Saturday's one is Michael Matthews Scott from his Oracle Green Edge team. Yeah, Sunday is off the back, and then on Monday we have the first of our new indoor training session videos, we, we real time Monday? ones. Yeah, we do. We sweated we buckets for this, Army. some of us more than others, and it is going to be great. I might not talk to you in the next one. <sighs> Nearly pulled a muscle there. And on Tuesday we're back, amazingly quickly, on the sofa to tell you what's on the following week again. Yeah. There's also going to be a maintenance video on Monday as well, by the way, just as per usual. Anyway, if you want to learn some top facts that you probably didn't know and perhaps would like to share with your mates about cycling in general from many years ago to the present day, how about clicking up here for our top 10 facts about cycling? Or for a retro versus modern video about the evolution of wheel technology, then you can get through to that just down there. And you can see Matt puncture a tyre with his head. It's pretty impressive. And you might want to subscribe to GCN just by clicking on us. Might want to. You definitely might. want to. You, well, no. After this lot? Well, if you don't want to, tell somebody and they might, and they might tell somebody else at the same time as yeah. well. Oh, give us a thumbs up. We haven't asked for that for ages. Yeah. Many likes as... We haven't pleaded for that for ages. <laughs> well, I was, just, I was just going to say, it's as many likes as you want, but they can only do one, because if they do it again, yeah. they turn it off, don't they? If you, if you like, you really? like. You unlike it, don't you? Uh, yeah. So you've only got to like it in odd numbers? Yeah. So you can like it three times? And then or five times, but not two or four. Don't like it four times because it'll be you negated your like. Don't negate your likes. Like your likes. <laughs> uh, let's end it now. Mm, quick.